Watching the world burn, watching the world burn. January 18th, 2024. Let's get into it. So I want to hit right off of the bat I, my bookmarks. Uh, so breaking. This just came out one hour ago. Pakistani sources are reporting. This is from Megatron. It's Megatron Ron. You can find him on X. Uh, are reporting that targets inside Iran have been hit by Pakistani armed forces. Now, if you didn't understand why, the uh, uh, Iran hit Pakistan. I guess there was some terrorists, according to Iran. You know, it's always according to your government. Uh, they hit uh, an organization down there, and, uh, and so Pac the Pakistanis were, were complaining. Now, they did say that two children were killed. Two children. Imagine that. And that made that made national news. It was broadcast all along. I, every mainstream media reporting across the United States was saying how two children were killed in Pakistan. We've got 7,000 dead kids in Gaza and you don't hear a damn thing about it. Isn't that amazing? Isn't that amazing? Let's see. 7,000 versus two. Now, I don't want any dead children. I don't want war anywhere. But I'm just shocked at how controlled and stupid the American people are that they don't, they just watch CNN or MSDNC. Did you watch, I mean, MSDNC actually uh, during the Iowa election there, the caucus, said, oh, we're not going to show you President Trump because that's disinformation. Are you freaking kidding me so now they are the arbitrators of truth they're the ministry of truth to only show you what they deem is important to you as american citizens if you're watching cnn or msdnc or abc or cbs or npr or, i mean uh, pbs I mean, what the hell is wrong with you you know that they're lying they're lying li i mean good lord rachel maddow i mean have you watched everything that came out of her mouth I mean, she was Russia, 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 Russia. Trump's a Russian, uh, Russian uh, person, you know. He's uh, the Steele dossier. It was all fake. It was all news. Did she ever apologize for that? Yet she still got a job. She was she was the one that told us that getting the COVID shot would stop the spread of the virus because if you got the shot, you couldn't give it the, the virus to anybody else. Well, then we found out that yeah, you could still spread the virus but it maybe it's in a lesser form or something i don't know <coughs> i'm sorry i'm getting carried away <coughs> so the reason i'm making this video is uh kim everson she just posted this uh, u.s backed idf has been found guilty of genocide by the international court of criminal justice have you seen anything on the news i haven't even seen anything on youtube or or CNN, or I mean, you're not going to even hear about this. This is the most huge story I've ever heard of. Now, I'm going to try to read this to you because I, I wanted to bring it up and show it to you on the phone. But you can go go on uh, X and you can find this. But this is this is what they're saying. Whoops, bookmarks. Let me go down. Thank you, Madam President. I quote, the state of Israel, the state of Israel shall immediately suspend its, its military operations in... And and in against, against Gaza. The, the state, state of Israel, Israel shall ensure that any military or regular armed units, which units may be directed or influenced by it, as well as, as, well as any organizations and persons which, which may be subject, subject to its control, direction or, direction or influence, take no steps, take no steps in furtherance of military operation. operation. Refer to point one, to point one above. Three. The Republic of South Africa and the State of Israel shall each, in accordance with their obligations under the Convention and Prevention of Punishment of the Crime of Genocide, in relation to the Pakistani Palestinian people, take all reasonable measures within their power to prevent genocide. The State of Israel shall, in accordance with its obligations under the Convention of Prevention and Punishment of Crime of Genocide, in relation to the Palestinian people as a group protected by the convention or the on the prevention and punishment of crime of genocide desist from the commission of any and all acts within the scope of article 2 of the convention in particular killing members of the group 
causing serious bodily or mental harm to the members of the group, deliberately inflicting on the group conditions of life calculated to bring about physical destruction in all or in part and imposing measures intended to prevent births within the group. The state of Israel shall pursue it. To point 4C, above, in relation to Palestinians, desist from and take all measures within its power, including the reciting of, of restrictions and or prohibitions to prevent the expulsion and forced displacement of their home, from their homes, the deprivation, the de de by profession, access to adequate food and water, access to humanitarian assistance, Including, including access, access to adequate fuel, fuel, shelter, and clothes. And the United States gave them every weapon, every bomb. We are complicit in this genocide. I'm ashamed. I'm ashamed of the Democrats, the homicidal, psychopath, Democrat, warmongering Democrats that perpetrated this crime on the world. It's disgusting to me. God, let's watch a video of what it looks like for a young kid to undergo surgery with anesthesia in Gaza. But more than 100 days into the conflict, humanitarian groups say the situation in Gaza has never been more dire. With a total lack of supplies, so doctors there are having to perform life-saving surgeries under very difficult circumstances. Uh, should warn you, disturbing images coming your way in just a moment as uh, we show you a doctor on your screen. He's uh, amputating the leg on his 16-year-old niece. He's doing it at home on the dining room table without the proper equipment or anesthetic. Happening at a time when Israeli tanks were reportedly surrounding the house. So we spoke to that doctor. Unfortunately, I had no other choice. There were only two options. Either let the girl die or try to do something with the limited means available to me. When I saw her leg, the decision was clear. Amputation was necessary. Could I get her to the hospital? Obviously not, because we'd been besieged for 15 days with tanks right at our doorstep. We had to make a decision. I had to try and do something to save her. The first step was to amputate her leg to stop the bleeding. I checked my medical bag, but there was nothing in it except a pair of scissors and some gauze. I looked around for a thread to tie up the artery. I couldn't see it properly. I didn't have my glasses with me. I told my nephews to look for a thread. All they could find was a normal thread that you'd use to fix torn clothes. I started the procedure using non-medical scissors. I placed her leg in soapy water to clean it from the gunpowder residue. Thank God we were able to save Ad. I gave myself five days to save her. I thought she may not be able to endure the pain, but she handled what no human could, getting this procedure done without anesthesia. The amount of infection she had was unbelievable. When the Israeli army left, we went to Al Shifa Hospital, where I met Dr. Mayer. He sent us an ambulance that took aid to the hospital, where we performed more surgery. We had to fix the amputation because it was done at home without supplies. We considered plastic surgery, but unfortunately, she had severe infections. The amputated leg still needed a lot of work, and her other leg was broken with multiple wounds. She needed some bone surgery, cosmetic surgery, and a prosthetic limb fitted. Every day, Palestinian doctors cry because they know how to help patients, but they lack the resources to do so. Every day, we have to perform amputations. Not because we want to, but because we lack the means to treat wounds. We're not butchers, but we have no other choice. Every day, a Palestinian doctor dies a little when he sees a mother, a brother or a sister bringing in their dead or wounded, seeing them fight for an open hospital bed. Was that the most horrible thing you've ever watched or even heard? Have you ever seen anything like that? What is wrong with the Democrats? They are the warmongering, most evil people on the planet. I just can't believe that they're willing to perpetrate these crimes against humanity. And they're supporting the Nazis in Ukraine. I mean, my God, how much more evil do they want to perpetrate? And now they're going to go to regional war? Let's watch the, a, a video about what Yemen was trying to do. Yemen was trying to stop the genocide. And yet, what did the Democrats do? They bombed Yemen again today. Let's watch that video.
A Houthi spokesperson exclusively told RT that military action by Western allies will not change the course of the group. The attack on Yemen by the U.S. is unjustified. We consider it to be a blatant violation of Yemeni sovereignty and an act of aggression against the Yemeni people. The Yemeni army targets Israeli ships heading to Israel and has not intercepted any other vessels, including American and British ships. Therefore, we consider that the militarization of the Red Sea represents a blatant violation of Yemeni sovereignty and a major shift in the conflict. This may lead to a major disaster by turning the Red Sea into a military arena that could threaten international navigation, which will lead to the expansion of the conflict outside the scope of the Red Sea. Look, the Yemeni operations did not cause any human harm, but rather represented economic pressure. Even on a material level, the losses were very limited. For example, the Galaxy leadership, which was taken to the port of Hodeida, did not suffer any casualties and did not contain any goods. But what America did was shed blood and turn the conflict into a bloody one that requires a response. Therefore, the one who should be worried is the aggressor, whose hands are stained with Yemeni blood without any justification. These strikes, which have occurred more than once, have no impact on our decision at all. We still adhere to our firm position on Palestine. That position is to prevent Israeli ships or those heading to occupied Palestine from crossing. The Yemeni Armed Forces decision to prevent American and British ships from crossing the Red Sea is a response to their arrogant and aggressive attacks against the Yemeni people. Imagine that! The homicidal, psychopath, Democrats! Oh, God, I just... Woo, I tell you, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's brutal. So let's, uh, let's see a, a couple of posts that I put up. So uh, this, is, uh, this was just something that I put out and... You know, I, I was just trying to explain to people why I make these videos. And, uh, and so I just want to put this out there one more time. May of 2022, I fell down the stairs in my dead mother's house, severely breaking my neck, collarbone, and two ribs. My insane Democrat mother had taken out the guardrails for unimaginable reasons. I spent three months in a Charlottesville hospital being taken care of by college kids after surgery because... The Democrats had fired all of the nurses because they wouldn't get the jab. Uh, so it was it was brutal because they didn't know what the hell they were doing. I and I, well, granted, it, good God, if I wasn't laying there in total agony, unable to move, I what probably would have excited me just a little bit, just to be honest. But good God, the, so the older nurses refused to get the mandatory Democrat jab. It was a living hell. Somehow I survived my Democrat ex-wife. I had a Democrat wife. I mean, I, I never knew the Democrats were so insane. And, uh, and then I have no feeling in my hands, legs, or feet, but I'm alive and fighting the Marxists every day. And that's who they are. They're Marxists. The Democrats are Marxists. All right, let's get back into the news. Uh, so let's just keep going. Boy, I tell you, I'm on a roll here today, huh? I guess I'm kind of fired up. But I was just surprised that the... the the court decided, I mean, because I figured they were all bought out by the United States. I mean, you know, there's, there's no justice in the world. It doesn't seem like it today. So, uh, well, this is, uh, this is a, an interesting video. Uh, by the way, I, I, I don't know if you knew, this, this was huge news. It just came out. Well, anyway, uh, Krinsky, there we are, K-R-Y-N-K-Y. Krinsky has fallen. This is huge. Russia has defeated the Ukrainians. They're retreating back across the river. Um, so Krensky, after killing, I don't know, I guess upwards of six to 8,000 uh, Ukrainian Marines in that battle that was going on for months, uh, it has fallen. And, uh, and so the Russians are moved in, and within the next day or two, well, they've already planted their flags on the, um, on the eastern or the, the northern side. And uh, they'll be moving across. And so, uh, I do, so all across the front, the Ukrainians are falling back. Uh, this is the beginning of the end. I, I think that we're looking at a total collapse of the Ukrainian armed forces within the next few months. Uh, if, if it takes that long, I'm going to be surprised. The other thing that came out was that uh, the Russians hit a hotel with a, uh, uh, one of their hypersonic missiles, and uh, they killed 80 French mercenaries in that hotel. 
So if you don't think that the NATO is providing troops as best they can, I, I just can't believe anybody in, in their right, even in their wrong mind, would want to go in to fight the Russians in Ukraine. I mean, but I guess 80 French mercenaries were there. Boy, I tell you, if you, if you want to get up on X, you got to watch the Devils in Davos. Uh, they got a major lecture from the Argentine uh, president, and uh, it, was, it was crazy. So, but you know what, before I, I get into all of the Davos stuff, let's watch your Ukrainian soldiers surrendering. So wasn't that interesting? So that was just a brief video of, of watching a few Ukrainian soldiers surrender to the Russians. Uh, I, I, can you imagine? It'd be very scary. You know, you don't know if those Russians are just going to shoot you right in the head or if you're going to be treated with some sort of dignity. Or, and by the way, it's like 16 below zero it, right now and they're fighting. And imagine retreating across a river, a frozen river, in 16 degrees below zero with the Russians shooting at you as you, as you, as you uh, fall back out of uh, Krensky. Uh, so anyway, then there was uh, a video. Boy, I, I, I know you'll never see it, but it was glorious. And, uh, it, and, and I, just, I just heard about it on the radio, and I'm sure I'll never get to see it. But there was an Australian uh, reporter. And, of course, John Kerry is in Davos. Uh, by the way, all of the... Uh, the prostitutes or the uh, uh, escorts, I guess I should say. I shouldn't call them prostitutes. Uh, all of the escorts have been fully blocked up in Davos. So all those uh, rich, elite uh, um, uh, individuals, uh, they're, they're getting, they're getting their, their, their stuff on. They're having a good time. Uh, so all of those pretty women, I imagine they're, 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 they're getting paid probably $4,000 an hour uh, to, to do whatever it is they do. But uh, I just wanted to throw that out there. But anyway, so he, so John Kerry he got this lecture from the Argentine reporter that says, look, you're talking about climate change, but you flew over here in your private jet burning more fuel than, than you know, most, you know, states and all the cars in, the, in, the, in probably, you know, the, the state of Texas burn in a single day. So what do you say about climate change? And boy, they, they, they shut that down. The woman goes, you get out of the room. And they, they escorted this reporter right out of the room. It was something else. All right, I guess that's it. That's it for, for the video, except I wanted to throw out one thing to help you out. Now, if you didn't know, I put solar panels on the roof of my house. I was very apprehensive to do it. And in the end, I understand if I have to replace the roof, which I will have to in seven years if I'm still alive, um, which given my medical condition with the breaking of my neck and all, and I might not be, so I guess I might not have to worry about it. But right now, even at this time of the year when there's limited, I mean, limited sunlight, my house, uh, cause I heat my house with electricity. I don't heat it with, I, I've cut, that's something else I did. And I've talked about this in previous videos was I have, I had gas coming into the house for gas heat. I, I cut the gas heat off and I bought a couple of electric heaters and I've done videos uh, reviewing the, the electric heaters that I put in the house. They're doing a great job. I mean, right now, tonight, it's supposed to drop down into the 30s. My house stays at 70 degrees. Of course, I did replace the windows uh, with bulletproof windows and that helped uh, with the, the, the heating situation. But anyway, uh, the point of the story is, is that my solar panels are producing more electricity than I'm burning. So... The lease on the solar panels is $85 a month because I wanted a steady bill, and that's good for the next year. And then it goes up incrementally from there. I, you know, I haven't looked at the contract. I don't know how much. I mean, they've given me an a amortization table, and it doesn't go up that much each year. So I'm thinking my bill is going to be pretty steady. And since I'm producing more electricity than I'm using, okay, my electric bill is just going to be the service fees or the... Uh, the connection fees that you get. 
Okay, you never get out of a bill. So I'm not paying for any electricity at this point, but I still have to pay the electric company the, the, the service fee because, you know, they have to maintain the, the power lines and everything coming into the house. And so they're going to charge you a minimal fee, which from what I understand is only between 10 and $20. So I'm looking at $100 for the next year for my electric bill with the solar panels. Just saying, something you might want to think about. Peace out. Stay free.